All right, the final episode of what's becoming most controversial series, at least until the Xenoblade 2 video goes up, which I promise is coming, guys. In fact, I have a best guy working on it right now. For Kenza Collection 4, they gave new kits to upper mid-tier weapons. Weapons that are pretty good, but not exactly top tier. The first one is 52 Gal, which I already made an extensive video guide for the other two versions, so I'll be pretty brief here. The 52 Gal does 52 damage. It's a short range shooter that has a medium slow fire rate compared to other short range shooters. It's pretty ink hungry, however, being only a two shot kill still gives it one of the fastest kill times in the entire game. The downside though, is that it don't shoot so straight. It's a high risk, high reward weapon. Sometimes when both shots land, it makes you go, yeah, but sometimes when you miss, it makes you go, ah, fuck this game. But if your shots start missing, just keep the trigger held down and hope you get lucky. But still, it's really easy to miss up point blank. And you know what that is? That's not good. It's like playing D&D. You can be right up in an unarmored goblin's face, fighting them with your warhammer, and then you roll a 1 on the attack roll and somehow miss. But if and when both shots hit, it feels really good, like rolling a nat 20. And the closer you are to your target, the greater advantage you'll have at both shots hitting. You see what I did there? No? No one plays D&D? Great! Alright, moving on. This Minnie Mouse looking 52 gal has Booyah Bomb and Splash Wall! The 52 gal is a frontline slayer, and in certain spots on the map, Splash Wall can protect you. Just make sure you throw it out way in advance so it doesn't deploy very quickly. If you throw it out while you're already being shot at, then. You're too late. Kenza 52 also has Booyah Bomb. Charge it up, throw it out. Not a whole lot of depth here. 52 gal is short range, so Booyah Bomb can help you attack opponents way outside your range. If you're on the front lines overextend and get surrounded, you can activate Booyah Bomb, then throw it at your feet, and then on your descent, throw out a splash wall in the midst of the confusion to protect yourself. The 52 gal is slower and more inconsistent than its short range shooter counterparts, but in the right hands, it can get the job done. So for a rating, out of a possible Ashes Snorlax from Pokemon, I give it a Great Sword from Monster Hunter. The Mini Splatling. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, well, it's a weapon. I've already made a video on the other minis, so once again I'll try to be brief here. The Mini isn't bad by any means, but it doesn't excel at anything that can't be done better or easier than other similar range weapons. You need to be really good with the Mini Splatling to get the same returns that someone who's only decent at some of the other weapons would get. That being said, the Mini has great mobility and ink output. The weapon's all about staying mobile and mastering the delicate balance between when to be charging, when to be shooting, and when to be refilling. But honestly, if you're considering the mini splatling, you might as well just use the ballpoint splatling instead. It can do everything the mini can do, but better. Seriously, I'm not the type of person to say that a weapon should be nerfed, but like, how is the ballpoint allowed to exist in its current form, especially with Splatoon 2's low refresh rate? The Kensa mini splatling has Toxic Mist and Ultra Stab. You can throw out Toxic Mist further than the Mini Splatling shoots, so you can throw out the Mist to slow someone down, which gives you time to close in and get the kill with your main weapon. But you gotta be quick, because it's super easy for your opponents to get it out of the Mist. Toxic Mist honestly works better as an intimidation factor than anything else, and generally the Mini Splatling works best if you're constantly shooting instead of taking time to throw out a sub-weapon. With Ultra Stamp, you can push into enemy territory by going into wacky mode, don't try this at home, and then you can go absolute nuts and throw the hammer, don't try this at home. The hammer flies pretty far through the air, don't try this at home. And with it, you can attack enemies way out of range, don't try this at home. The Kensa Mini Splatling, like the other Mini Splatlings, is good, just not good enough. Out of a possible Genos from One Punch Man, I give it a... a Jeffrey from Fire Emblem's 9 and 10. You know, he joins with the Paragon scale and pretty good stats and a Brave Lance, but he's barely available for the whole game, and by the time he actually does join you, you most likely got multiple better Lance units and more optimal mana units and supports aren't set and...
Blasters have always been pretty bullshit weapons. It's just like, oh, I missed twice. I still get a kill. Oh, I actually aimed. It's a one-hit KO. What? I hate going up against them, and I don't want to use them myself, because I don't want to subject someone else to having to go up against something like that. Given all of that, though, my only problem with the Rapid Blaster is... How have I not used this sooner? People say that the tri Slosher is easy mode. People say that players using the Clash Blaster is a brain dead. People say that the Arrow Spray takes zero skill. Have you tried the Rapid Blaster? This is true easy mode. Why does this weapon get a free pass? Sure, unlike a lot of the other blasters, this one's a 2-3 shot kill instead of 1-2 shots, but it's called the Rapid Blaster for a reason, and that's because it has a really good fire rate. And it also has long range, because how dare you use the 10 attack? And it's a blaster, so each shot covers an area around your target, so as long as you're kinda close on your first shot, it can be hard for your target to dodge the next two shots that come out. You're at a disadvantage if your target is able to get in close, but you can always just back away and then keep shooting. I'll probably make a full length guide for all five Rapid Blasters, including the Rapid Pros, because, come on, they're, they're similar enough. But not because I like the Rapids, but because they're easy to use. It's just like, can you point? Can you count to three? Yes? Then you can use the Rapid. The first time I used the Rapid Blasters, Platoon 2 was recording for this video, and I was like, oh, this weapon's pretty good and really easy, I gotta use this more often. The Kenta Rapid has Torpedoes and Baller. Torpedoes are good at scouting out hiding enemies, doing some damage before you fire the Rapid, or just being a distraction so that they'll have to shoot it down, which gives you more time to get into optimal Rapid range. And for the special, if you need to get in the enemy's side, use the Baller. Are you about to die? Use the Baller. It might save you. So yeah, the Rapid Blaster is easier than a hooker on the corner. People will think you're really good at Splatoon if you're good with this weapon, but in actuality, it's just something that's really easy to do. Which is why out of a possible baking a cake, I give it a flipping a pancake. I'm just very hungry, guys. The Glugas are the 96 Gala Duelies. They have the slowest fire rate of all the Duelies, which is bad. But they have longer range, which is good. But they're very ink hungry, and when you combine the ink consumption used when dodge rolling, they're pretty ink inefficient, which is bad. But they're the only Duelies with the 3 shot kill, which is good. But after the Duelie dodge roll, you're stuck for a long time before you can move again, which is bad. But after you roll, your damage output increases and you go from a 3 shot kill to a 2 shot kill, which is good. But sometimes they suffer from bad RNG and accurate shots will miss, which is bad. But with their double stuff Oreo color scheme, they're the best looking of all the Kensa weapons, which is good. Certainly better than the Kensa Splattershot Pro. No, I'm still not over this. Why didn't they just make it all black, which would have been dope, instead of making it look almost exactly like the Forge Splattershot Pro? What was the design philosophy? Was it just like... But back to the Kensa Glugas, they have Fizzy Bomb as their sub-weapon. The can bounces further than your glue gun's, uh, glue. So you can charge it up to stage 3, then throw it out to confuse your opponents outside your dually range. For movement options, you can throw out a single charge Fizzy Bomb, and it'll leave a little trail. And then you can swim through the soda behind it, that's a weird image. And Ink Armor, it's Ink Armor, what do you want me to say? It protects your whole team a little bit, for a little bit. If you run out of ink, you can activate it for an instant quick ink refill. You can also throw a fizzy bomb, activate ink armor, then immediately throw out another fizzy bomb. I never really used any of the glugas before practicing for this video because they were too slow compared to what I was used to, but now that I started using them, I actually really like them. If you can get used to the slower fire rate, you can put quite a lot of hurting on people. I'll probably make an in-depth full-length video for all three glugas eventually. So in short, the Glugla Duelies are slower and chunkier than their Dually counterparts, but in the right hands, they can do quite well. 
which is why out of a possible Ashes Snorlax from Pokemon, I give it a great sword from Monster Hunter. Hey, wait a minute!